Hey y'all, I appreciate it so much y'all taking the time to come over and visit me on uh, Rochester's Heating and Air's YouTube channel. I'm Fritz Rochester, a proud Kentucky Master HVAC contractor right here in Louisville, Kentucky. And today guys, I want to switch gears just a little bit. Uh, I've got plenty of installation videos, plenty of uh, troubleshooting videos, you know, condenser fans, blower motors, uh, how to braze with nitrogen, um, yada yada yada, the list goes on and on. Heck, I've got uh, videos of framing decks out back and uh, gardening with mom and and uh, videos of my good buddy Sarge out there. But uh, like I said, I want to switch gears here a little bit. And what I actually want to do is start like maybe shooting a, a series of tech tip videos. And I'm actually going to make like a playlist out of them. And uh, that way, uh, some of the new up and coming techs, that's who I'm doing this for, some of the new and upcoming tradesmen and tradeswomen to uh, the HVAC industry, I hope might be able to utilize this some and, and maybe even uh, give a little refresher to some of the seasoned techs out there and I uh, truly, truly hope so. But uh, nonetheless, guys, um, I don't claim to be a super tech. I never have. Um, I am learning right along with the rest of y'all. And the way I actually do it, guys, is I, I love heating and air conditioning. And when I've got downtime, I get on the Internet and I research stuff, man. The, the Internet is such a vast array. It has such a vast array of knowledge on there. And I, I'll find stuff in PDF form and I download it. And like if I go on a job that uh, <clears throat> actually doesn't have the uh, the service guides or service facts or what whatnot, hopefully I've got it in PDF form on my computer. Uh, that's another thing too, guys. We stringently, I can't repeat this enough, we stringently need to be following the, the manufacturer's installation and service guidelines. I mean, I'd say 99% of the service calls that most of us go on is because of the, uh, the, the foul the nasty installation practices that they didn't follow the guidelines whatsoever and it's just uh, problem after problem but uh, anyway I'm running on here guys a little bit so basically like I said I want to shoot some tech tip videos for the up-and-coming tradesmen and tradeswomen and our first tech video is going to be a tip tech video is going to be a troubleshooting the refrigerant system with superheat and subcooling okay guys this is just some uh, rule of thumb ballpark type uh, tech tips this by no means is written in stone, okay? Now, let me repeat that again before I hear any mess on here. This by no means is written in stone, okay? This is just a, to get you all in the ballpark to determine what's going on and maybe help you pinpoint uh, something crucial and then maybe help you determine how to fix it. But, uh, all right, no further ado. All right, troubleshooting is a matter of temperature differences. Superheat is a temperature difference differential. Subcooling is a temperature differential. Evaporator entering air versus leaving air temperature is a differential. Condenser entering air versus leaving air temperature is a differential. These four temperature differentials are the critical measurements used to determine all refrigerant related problems often a manifold gauge set is not even necessary okay guys let's move along like I said this is not written in stone critical temperature differentials air temperature drop over the evaporator should not exceed 20 degrees Fahrenheit air temperature rise over the condenser should not exceed 30 degrees Fahrenheit the low side superheat should be between 20 and 30 degrees the condenser subcooling should not exceed 15 degrees. An air temperature drop of the evaporator greater than 20 degrees indicates low evaporator airflow. An air temperature rise of the condenser greater than 30 degrees indicates low condenser airflow. Okay, guys, on a lot of these, you're not gonna you're not gonna be in ideal conditions. So you know, um, a lot of these measurements might be off just a little. Um, like I said. Uh, it depends on the conditions we have on, on a lot of these measurements. Um, so actually on these particular ones we're going to need some special tools. We're going to need some type of temperature probe so we can get our, our drop. Um, we're going to need uh, some type of device so we can actually do our wet bulb and our dry bulb and actually uh, figure out what our target superheat is supposed to be. Um, as for the condenser subcooling should not exceed 15 degrees. 99 percent of the time that I go on a heat pump or an air conditioner that has a TXV on it, there is a designed uh, subcooling temperature that the manufacturer requests you to meet. 
and that's what I go by. It's stamped right there on the data plate. And uh, so let's move on, guys. Okay, a low side superheat less than 20 degrees indicates too much liquid refrigerant is in the low side. A low side superheat greater than 30 degrees indicates too little refrigerant is in the low side. A condenser subcooling exceeding 15 degrees indicates too much liquid refrigerant is in the high side. Okay. All right, comparing these readings will lead us to an understanding of what is wrong with the system. For example, assuming we have adequate airflow over both the evaporator coil and the condenser coil, the following statements is true. High superheat with high condenser subcooling indicates a restriction. Too much liquid is in the high side and too little is in the low side. Low superheat with high subcooling indicates an overcharge. Too much liquid on both sides. All right. High superheat with low condenser subcooling indicates an undercharge. Not enough liquid on either side. Okay, guys, there's other troubleshooting guides that you can find that probably goes into a lot greater detail. This is, like I said, this is just getting us in the ballpark. And this is what I love right here, guys. Check this one out. Low side superheat and condenser subcooling just simply tells us where the refrigerant is located at in the system. Low side superheat and condenser subcooling simply tell us where the refrigerant is located. And that's what I love about the Testo 550, guys. Uh, if y'all are still rocking a compound gauge, it's time to it's time to go out and get you a set of uh, either Testos or or whatever particular manifold you like. But it it's uh, it's time for the Testo, guys. But uh, anyway, that's what my point is. With the Testo, it has opened my eyes to the refrigerant cycle. And I can see everything in real time. But uh, okay, enough of the preaching there. Um, okay, low side superheat and condenser subcooling simply tell us where the refrigerant is located. God, I love it. Too much refrigerant on the high side and too little on the low side indicates a restriction. Too much on both sides indicates an overcharge and not enough on either side indicates an undercharge. Okay guys, I hope some of y'all got something out of this. Um, I hated to be a little preachy there, but uh, I'm kind of enjoying these. I might, like I said, I'm gonna shoot several of them. I hope y'all enjoy them. And I hope uh, I hope the up and coming techs and, and everybody uh, might have got a little something out of it. But uh, I appreciate y'all watching my videos. I can't thank you enough. And uh, y'all take care now and uh, we'll talk at you soon.